This video is going to cover the preferred unit of concentration for chemists, which is molarity, and then it will also go over some dilution calculations using molarity. And you can see this adorable little mole in a one liter beaker. That will make sense. You have a one mole per liter solution here. So molarity, what is molarity? Well, you will have to remember what you learned in the mole unit because we will be using the unit of mole, as you would probably guess with the term molarity. What molarity means is moles of solute, remember that's the stuff that's being dissolved, per liters of solution. That's the thing you end up with. So a few notes to make about the units here. Molarity has units of capital M. But notice, through this very simple formula, that inside of that big M, there are two units hiding. Those two units are moles on top, moles of the solute, and liters of the solution on the bottom. So whenever you see this capital M, you have to realize that what's in there is moles per liter. So you can, you know, when you get an answer about concentration, you can say molar, molarity, moles per liter. So moles per L mole per L is the same thing as this capital M, molarity or molar. Another thing to keep in mind that we'll use a lot for the calculations, you'll need to remember your metric conversions. One liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. If you get that down, that'll make your calculations a lot easier and you are allowed to just convert that in your head when you're doing some of these problems. So if you have a solution, like here is a potassium chloride solution and it says 2M. So what that means is it's a two molar solution or two moles per liter. So if you were finding this in the chemistry room, you could say, oh, this solution is two molar or this solution is two moles per liter. And here's your joke. This is also two moles per liter. Haha. <laughs> okay. There are three types of molarity calculations that you will be asked to perform. First, you'll need to be able to calculate the concentration of solution in molarity. You'll need to be able to calculate the amount of solute in a solution. You'll also need to be able to calculate the amount of liters or how many liters of the solution could you make. All three of these calculations are important for working in the lab because there will be various times where you'll need to calculate any of these three types. For example, number one, you have the recipe for a solution and you need to know what concentration you're making. That would be this type of calculation. Or if you know the concentration you want and you need to figure out how much solute you need to dissolve, that's calculation number two. Or if you know how much you have and you know the concentration you want, you can figure out how many liters of the solution you can make with that. So all three are very valuable. So starting with number one, you will see though that these calculations can be tricky, similar to the mole unit. There's just a lot of variation in how to set these up. So even though I'm going to go over two examples from each, you'll still probably want to watch the tutorial video, which will go over the homework for those questions specifically to get you going. It can be confusing, so just kind of follow the tips I have here. And as we go through the video, I highly encourage you to pause as we go and try to work these problems out on your own before I go over the steps to do it here. So the first type of problem is when you're asked to calculate the concentration. All right, so one thing I want you to ask yourself before every single question you do here and on the homework is I want you to look at the formula for molarity, right? Remember, this is molarity, and that's equal. Big M is equal to moles per liter. And for each question, I want you to figure out what are you calculating. So for example, these, these first set of questions were trying to figure out the concentration. So that's the big M, right? So to do that, we want to set up the problem by putting moles on top and liters on the bottom. So we want to read the question and see how we can get this set up here. So for example, for the first question, we are given 3.4 moles of NaCl in 2,500 milliliters of solution. So again, we want moles on top. We want liters on the bottom. We have moles right here, so that's great. So we'll put 3.4 moles on top, and we want liters on the bottom. Well, we have 2,500 milliliters. That's kind of close to liters, so we'll put that on the bottom. And that's how we're going to start out this problem, okay? Remember, we want it to look like this because we want to get big M. 
The problem is we have milliliters in the bottom and we need liters. So you're going to need a conversion factor here, and you're going to use dimensional analysis to convert milliliters to liters. Again, I said you are welcome to do this in your head if you're comfortable doing that, just writing this in as liters, which would be moving the decimal three spaces to the left. So you could write 2.5 liters here instead and just do this in one step. That is fine. But if you want to show all the work and do the dimensional analysis for the conversion, you'll put milliliters would go on top because we want that to cancel. Liters would go on the bottom, which makes sense because we want liters to end up on the bottom. And remember the relationship is that there's a thousand milliliters for every one liter. So now that we have that, our milliliters cancel out and we're left with moles on top, liters on the bottom, which is what we want. So when you type this into your calculator, again, as we're going through this, if you want to pause, I'd highly recommend you pause, try to type this in, see if you can figure out the correct answer with the correct number of sig figs. So you're going to take your calculator, all the numbers in the top you multiply, all the numbers in the bottom you divide. And the order does not matter. So you could do 3.4 divided by 2,500 times 1,000, or 3.4 times 1,000 divided by 2,500. But when you hit the equal sign, you need to round that answer to how many sig figs. Should be two sig figs. You'll always check the numbers that are given to you in the problem. So here you have two sig figs. Here you have two sig figs. So we should get an answer to two sig figs, and in this case it is 1.4 molar. Or you could write 1.4 mole slash capital L. Okay. All right. The next one. If you want to pause and try this one on your own, go for it. Otherwise, I will walk you through. So this one we're given 22 grams of NaCl in 1.6 liters of solution. So again, we're solving for concentration. So we want big M. We want moles on top. We want liters on bottom. Do we have moles to put on top here? We do not, but we have grams. We know that grams is kind of similar to mole and we can convert grams to mole. We learned about how to do that in the mole unit. So we'll go ahead and put 22 grams on top and then we'll put 1.6 liters on the bottom. That works out because we want liters on the bottom. The issue now is we need to convert grams to moles. So how do we do that? It's sodium chloride. So what you're going to need to do is calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride and use that as a conversion factor to convert from grams to moles. Um, you'll notice that I'm going to use sodium chloride in all of the problems in the notes today so that you won't be having to calculate molar masses for a bunch of different substances. So if you calculate the molar mass for sodium chloride, uh, you're going to put that in the denominator because that's the grams. And remember, the molar mass is always equal to one mole, so that will go on top. Molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44. We're going to be using that a lot, again, just so that you don't have to recalculate a bunch of molar masses. So now your grams cancel, and you're left with moles on top, liters on the bottom, which is what we want for molarity. So you'll type that into your calculator however you want, 22 divided by 1.6 divided by 58.44. How many sig figs? Should be two sig figs again for this one. 0 0.24 molar should be the answer. Okay. If this isn't making sense, you want to go back, rewind, rewatch, try again. All right. So this is the first set of how to calculate concentration. Next, we're going to try calculating for the amount of solute. So again, let's look at the formula for molarity. Molarity is equal to moles per liter. In this case, if we're calculating the amount of solute, we're solving for this part. Sometimes it might ask for moles, like the first question. Sometimes it might ask for mass, uh, but we know that's related to moles, so we can calculate that. Okay, But we want this. So what we're going to do is we want our final answer of moles. So if we read through the what we're given in the question, so in the first one we want to calculate how many moles of NaCl in 675 milliliters of 3.40 molar solution we want to find the unit of moles because that's what we want as our answer. The issue is we don't have moles. Or do we? Think about it, right? What is inside of this big M here? Inside of this big M 
is moles per liter. So actually what you have here, 3.40 molar, this is actually a conversion factor. This conversion factor tells you 3.40 moles is equal to one liter. Remember, that's what big M means, moles per liter. So now, if you break that up, I highly recommend you rewrite this. When you are given molarity, rewrite it like this so you can see what units are inside of there because you might need them, right? So now that we have that, we have moles. And since we want moles as our answer, we're going to start with that. We want to put that on top. So we're going to put 3.40 moles per one liter. Those are equal, so it's okay for us to put that on the bottom, right? As long as they're equal. So we do that, and then we're trying to just have moles as our answer. So we need to figure out how to get rid of this liter here. Well, we can do that by using this milliliter unit, right? 675 milliliters. The only issue is we need first to convert from liters to milliliters. Or it actually doesn't matter which order you do this. So your conversion factors, remember, could be switched. You could first go from liters to milliliters, or you can put your milliliters here because you know they're similar and then cancel them out here. Okay. The only reason I put this over one is just so that you can kind of see clearly what's in the numerator and denominator. But you don't need units on this one because it's just a number by itself, 675 milliliters. So if you want to leave out that one, that is fine. But you want to make sure you know that the milliliters is in the top so that you know to put milliliters in the bottom here. Okay. So notice our milliliters will cancel out and our liters will cancel out. And so we'll be left with just moles, which is what the question asked for. So when you type this in, 3.40 times 675 divided by 1,000, you're going to want three sig figs, because both of these numbers have three sig figs. Let's go ahead and type that in. We can pause, work that out. And you should get 2.30 moles of NaCl. Okay. If you want to pause and work on the second part on your own and try it out before I go over it, you can do that. This time it's asking for the mass of NaCl in 1.5 liters of 2.2 molar solution. So just like we did here, we're going to break up this big M because we want mass, which is very similar to moles. So I know that moles is inside of this big M. So we'll break that up. 2.2 mole is equal to 1 liter. That's what that means here. And I'm going to put that 2.2 mole on top because that's pretty close to mass. It's equal to 1 liter, so I'll put that in the denominator here. And again, we want to get rid of, we have two things we need to do. We need to get rid of the liters as one thing. And the other thing is we need to convert these moles to mass. We need to convert to grams. Okay. Um, and to do that, again, you need the molar mass of sodium chloride. So let's see, I actually forgot what I did first. You can decide what you want to do first. It doesn't matter um, the route that you take. So it looks like first I want to get rid of my liters. So I get rid of the liters here by using the 1.5 liters given in the problem. Remember that needs to go on top so that they'll cancel out. And the 1 is just there to put it in the, put the liters in the numerator, but you don't need that 1. Don't have to have that there. Now that I've canceled out the liters, the last step is to convert my moles to grams because it's asking for mass. So since moles is in the top, I want to put moles in the bottom, which would be one mole, and then the molar mass of NaCl goes on top, which is 58.44 grams. We already calculated that. So now the moles cancel. We're going to be left with grams. Go ahead and type that into your calculator. See if you can figure out the correct answer to the right number of sig figs. You should use two sig figs. Type that in. You should get 190 grams as your final answer. All right, so you can see these problems are a little bit trickier because you have to break up that capital M. And we're going to do that again in the next one, but the next one is even trickier. Okay, so again, you can pause, rewind, retry those problems. The third type of problem for molarity is to calculate the liters that can be made. So if we look at the formula for molarity, notice that the liters or the volume is in the denominator. So this can be very tricky here, but we're going to use the same method that we used last time. 
because if we read the problem, 32 grams NaCl used to make a 1.5 molar solution. We're trying to figure out how many liters can be made from that. I don't see liters in the problem, but remember our trick from the last type of problem, this big M, we can break that down. Okay, 1.5 M means 1.5 moles is equal to one liter. Now I have my liters here. So the trick is, since I want liters as my final answer, I need to take that one liter and put that on top. So I'm gonna put the one liter on top and the 1.5 mole on the bottom. That's totally legal because that's just like saying, you know, when we use conversion factors, 12 inches is equal to one foot or one foot is equal to 12 inches. It doesn't matter which way you put it, um, you just need to use it however you, is needed for the problem. So for this problem, we want liters, so we put that on top. It will cause a little bit of an issue when we calculate, so I'll explain that in a second. Okay, But then what we want to do, since we just want to end up with liters, we need to figure out how to get rid of this mole. The way to do it is by using this mass of sodium chloride. So remember again, your route might be different. You could first put this 32 grams here, and then use the molar mass here, or you could convert using the molar mass first and then use the 32 grams. So let's see, I chose to do the molar mass first. I wanna convert this moles to grams first. So I put my moles on top and the 58.44 grams, what is that? That is the molar mass of sodium chloride. So this conversion factor converts me from moles to grams. Now my moles cancel, I'm still left with grams. The way to get rid of the grams is by using this 32 grams. And again, I put that over one just to clearly show that it's in the numerator, but you don't need the one. When you type this into the calculator, be very careful because remember, everything in the bottom needs to be divided. So you cannot type 1.5 in to begin. It needs to be divided by 1.5. So what you can do is you can either type one divided by 1.5 divided by 58.44 times 32. Or, remember the order doesn't matter, so you could start with 32, because that's in the top, and then divide, divide. Up to you, try it out. Make sure you get the same answer as I do, which to two sig figs should be 0 0.37 liters. Okay, These problems are probably the trickiest. Go ahead and pause if you want to try B on your own. And if not, I will walk you through it here. So 0.25 mole NaCl used to make 0.60 molar solution. So again, we're gonna break up that capital M and we get 0.60 mole is equal to one liter. We want the one liter on top. So we'll put that on top and the 0 0.60 mole on bottom. And we wanna end up with just liters. So we need to get rid of this mole. The easy way to do it is you have moles already. This one's a nice problem. So you're gonna take that, put it in the numerator so that your moles cancel out. And just be careful when you type this into your calculator that you divide the 0.6. So go ahead and try that. Should use two sig figs to get you 0 0.42 liters for that one. So those are the three types of problems you might need to go through again, rewatch or retry these. You also have the homework assignment to practice. And we're going to move on to the next type of problem, which are dilution calculations. So before we get into the calculations themselves, let's go over the terms a little bit concentrated and dilute. Hopefully you've heard and used these terms before. Again, I use Kool-Aid a lot as an example, but if you've made any kind of juice from concentrate, or any other solution with, you know, in the kitchen with water. Um, if you have a concentrated solution, it means you have a relatively high amount of solute dissolved into that solvent. If you have a dilute solution, you have a relatively low amount of solute. So it's important to understand that these two terms are relative. So you have, if you have two solutions, you can say one is more concentrated or one is more dilute. Um, when the solution is diluted, it's important to remember that the amount of moles remains the same. And that's gonna be the basis for our equation that we use. But before we look at the math, again, just to give you a little visual here. So let's say we start with a concentrated solution. To dilute it, all we do is add water. So here would be the resultant solution after we diluted it. So just to go over, if we look at 
here was our concentrated solution versus our new dilute solution, what has now happened to the volume? Did it increase, decrease, or stay the same? The volume increased, right? We started with this amount, now we have this amount. What happened to the concentration of the solution? Did the concentration increase, decrease, or stay the same? The concentration decreased because you added more water, which does not contain any solute. So you have less solute particles per solvent particles. And now the last question would be, what happened to the amount of moles of solute? Increase, decrease, or stay the same? Those stayed the same because you had a certain amount of solute here, and that was not changed by adding water. You still have the same amount of solute. So that's kind of the basis for this equation that we're going to see. And yes, had to throw in a joke there as well. When you dilute a solution, you do change the concentration. So here's our math. Okay, here's the equation we're going to use. It's a lovely equation here. M1V1 equals M2V2. So what does that mean? So M1 represents the concentration of the concentrated solution, or I could say the molarity of the concentrated solution. Uh, V1 represents the volume of the concentrated solution. So you can kind of think of this like before and after it was diluted. Um, on the other side, we have the variables to represent the diluted solution. So M for molarity is the molarity of the diluted solution, and V would be the volume of the diluted solution. Um, it is um, it can be confusing, but all you need to remember is that the concentrated stuff needs to stay together and then the diluted stuff needs to stay together. It doesn't matter uh, if you put the diluted stuff on this side and the concentrated stuff on this side. The ones and twos are just to kind of make sure that you know that they need to stay together. So you could, instead of putting M1, V1, you could say like M concentrated, V concentrated, and M dilute, V dilute. As long as you understand that the dilute numbers need to go together and the concentrated numbers need to go together. And again, the reason that this equation works is that we know that the amount of moles stays the same before and after dilution. So if you multiply a molarity by the volume, the volumes cancel out and you're left with moles, which eventually just boils down to moles of the concentrated solution is equal to moles of the diluted solution. And that's why this equation works. So when you do these problems, there's going to be a lot of numbers in the question. And what you want to do is go through and figure out what each of those numbers represent. Is it a concentration or a volume? Is it for the concentrated solution or the dilute solution? So for this one, what would be the concentration of a solution of hydrochloric acid if 56 milliliters of a 2.3 molar solution is diluted to 135 milliliters? So what we're going to do, go, do is go through and label each of the numbers. So this 56 milliliters, it's milliliters, so that tells you it's a volume. And we're going to call it volume 1, right? The important thing to understand is that this word of is very special because it can tie two numbers together. So when it says 56 milliliters of a 2.3 molar so solution, that tells you that this number is the concentration for the same solution. So if this is V1, this is going to be M1. Remember the numbers are arbitrary. So if you call this V2, that's fine as long as you call this M2. That makes sense. All right, so that's our concentrated solution. Those two numbers are going to go together. And then over here, we have another volume. That's going to be our other volume, V2. This is the volume of the diluted solution. So you can see, again, if you understand what happens when you dilute something, you had a smaller volume, and now you have a bigger volume because you added water. So we're going to use our equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. And in this case, what variable are we solving for? What's missing? in the problem. In this case, we're missing M2. We want to solve for the concentration of the diluted solution. So you're going to need to use some algebra to rearrange to solve for M2, get M2 by itself. To do that, you'll divide both sides by V2 um, to get M2 alone. So we get this equation. Okay. Then all you need to do is plug in those numbers. If you already labeled them, it's super easy. And the great thing about this equation is that you'll see even though these are in milliliters, there's no need to convert them to liters because what's going to happen to these units here? They will cancel out. So since the milliliters cancel out, 
you're left with molarity. So if you converted them to liters, that's fine as long as you did both of them, but there's no need to do that. They'll just cancel out. So you're going to type in 2.3 times 56 divided by 135. The order does not matter as long as you multiply the top numbers and divide the bottom number. Number of sig figs will be two sig figs because this number and this number have two sig figs. Even though this number has three sig figs, we're limited to the fewest number of sig figs. So our final answer would be 0.95 molar. You always want to step back and ask yourself if that number makes sense. So we had initially a concentrated solution and then we diluted it to a bigger volume. What happens to the concentration when you dilute something? the concentration decreases, right? If you add water, the concentration should be smaller. And that's what we see here. We solved for the diluted concentration. That, that concentration should be a smaller number than the concentrated molarity that we started with. And it is, so that looks good. Here's another problem. If you wanna go ahead and pause and try this one on your own before I walk you through it, I think you a lot of you will probably be able to do that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to walk you through it the same way we did the last problem. So how many liters of a 1.3 molar solution of Kool-Aid are needed to prepare a 0.75 liter of a 0.45 molar solution? So again, I'm going to go through and label all these numbers. So I see a concentration here. So the 1.3 molar, I'm going to call M1. That's a concentration. And then down here, I have these two numbers connected by the word of, so I know these are going to go together. So this I'm going to say is V2 because it's a volume in liters. This is a concentration, so this will be M2. These numbers have to match. So when we look at our equation, what are we solving for this time? This time we're solving for V1. So I'm going to rearrange that equation to solve for V1, get V1 by itself by dividing both sides by M1, and then simply plug in your numbers to this formula. And you'll see similarly, but with a different set of numbers and some different units, the molarity will cancel out. M cancels out with M, and you'll be left with liters here. So when you type this into the calculator, the units you'll end up with will be liters. And again, let's think about what type of number we would want to see. So it's saying how many liters of this solution um, are needed to prepare this diluted solution. You know that the M2 is diluted because this concentration is less than this concentration. So what we should expect is a volume that is smaller than this volume. And let's see if we get that. And it is 0.26 liters. That volume is smaller than the diluted volume, which makes sense because when we start with that concentrated solution, we should have a smaller amount, and then we add water to make it 0.75 liters. All right, so these dilution problems always start with this formula, figure out what numbers you have, and there should just be one missing that you'll solve for. All right, you'll get more practice in the homework. Make sure you watch the tutorial video as well.